Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States of America, arriving. Ready? Two. Please remain standing for our national anthem. Military personnel, hutton hut. Hand salute. Please remain standing. At this time, I invite Professor Janet McLeavy to the front of the stage. As mace bearer, Professor McLeavy is the member of the faculty with the longest service at the Coast Guard Academy.
the 136th commencement exercises of the United States Coast Guard Academy are now convened. Captain Michael J. Parisi, Command Chaplain, United States Coast Guard Academy, will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to be mindful of your presence and of your love for your people as we gather to see the class of 2017 graduated from this academy and commissioned in the United States Coast Guard. We thank you for the perseverance and strength of purpose that bring them to this happy day. We thank you too, Lord, for all who have offered them support and encouragement along the way for parents and family and friends, for teachers and coaches, for the leadership of the academy and of the nation, for mentors, sponsors, and clergy. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Platform party and presenters of commissions, please join the class of 2017 in Uncover. All other military personnel, please remain covered throughout the ceremony. I now have the pleasure of introducing the 41st Superintendent of the United States Coast Guard Academy, Rear Admiral James E. Rendon. Well, good morning, everyone. President Trump, Secretary Kelly, Admiral Zukunft, Governor Malloy, public and community leaders, distinguished alumni, military veterans, faculty, staff, Corps of Cadets, family and friends, and of special note, soon to be ensigns from the great class of 2017, how special it is this morning to be together for this extraordinary occasion. What glorious weather here in Coast Guard City, New London. What a terrific Coast Guard Academy Bears Day. I can feel the energy and enthusiasm. And to get things started, how about a loud and proud Go Bears on the count of three. One, two, three. Go Bears! Oh, how I love this place. And what a beautiful, beautiful sight it is to see these graduates right here ready and eager to join the officers and crews performing the many missions of the Coast Guard. Today is indeed a great day for them, for this academy, and for our Coast Guard. Yes, today is about these folks right here, these 195 cadets, once swabs, now leaders, and we are all so very excited for them. But today, is not just about them. It's also about parents, families, sponsor families, friends, all of you here who have done so much to encourage and support them during the past four years. It is through your guidance and support, your love, that each of them will be receiving their hard-earned diploma and commission. And so on behalf of this class, if I may, the class of 2017, I say thank you, well done, and congratulations. This place, the United States Coast Guard Academy, works hard and works together on our main calling to educate, train, develop, and inspire leaders of character leaders that leave here with the strength of character to meet the expectation and challenges of our Coast Guard, of our nation, and community of nations around the globe. Mr. President, I am so very proud to report that the women and men before you today have successfully completed their 200-week program. They have individually and collectively, as a class, as a team, as a family, exercise, flexed, and truly have strengthened their character muscles academically, athletically, and professionally 
these past four years. The mission here for this class is complete. They are indeed ready and will be always ready to take on the responsibilities of a commissioned officer in our great Coast Guard. We, the faculty and staff here, have the utmost confidence that they will serve and lead and succeed with unwavering zeal and care and determination. Congratulations to the faculty and staff who prepared them, all of you here that have supported them. Congratulations to this impressive class. Go commencement, go graduates, and forever, go Bears. And of our 195 young men and women graduating here today, with the class of 2017, six are international cadets who have proudly represented their nations while greatly, greatly enriching our academy and the Corps. At this time, we invite these international cadets, along with members of their national delegation, to stand when their names are called and remain standing. These graduates will return to their countries and serve with distinction in their armed forces. From Honduras, Alejandro Puerto Sanabria. From Georgia, Eldor Sangaladize. Three cadets from Mexico, Luis Marban Terrazas. <laughs> Nineve Penada Carranza. <laughs> and Ruth Tres Salvatore. And lastly, from the Marshall Islands, James Miyazoyi. Thank you. Thank you, you may be seated. I now have the privilege of introducing this year's distinguished graduate. The distinguished graduate is the cadet who graduates with the highest military precedence average which includes the academic, military, and physical components of the entire 200-week program. It is with great pride that I introduce this year's distinguished graduate, first class Christopher, Christopher Popeil. First class First class Christopher Popeil is from St. Augustine, Florida. He majored in operations research and computer analysis. This past academic year, first class Popeil completed a project that created a decision support tool that ranks by priority Coast Guard small boat stations within a district based on various mission and environmental factors. Impressively, he, is, he was also working that project in the fall semester while also being the regimental chief of staff. Talk about time management challenges. In the summer of 2016, First Class Popeil worked with the Office of Requirements and Analysis at the Coast Guard headquarters to learn how operations research is used to solve some of the most important issues facing our Coast Guard today. Next month, First Class Popeil will report to the Coast Guard Polar Star, his first choice apparently, in Seattle, Washington, where he will serve as deck watch officer. I have the utmost confidence that first class Propeal will do great things in our Coast Guard just as he has done here at the Academy. Please join me in another round of applause for the distinguished graduate of the United States Coast Guard Academy, class of 2017, first class, Christopher Popeil.
Good morning, President Trump, Secretary Kelly, Admiral Zunkamp, Admiral Rendon, distinguished guests, faculty and staff, family and friends, and the incredible class of 2017. I thank you all for joining us to celebrate the hard work and achievements of our great class, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak on this momentous occasion. Winston Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. All 195 of us had the courage to continue from suave summer to graduation, from sea trials through grad week. In late April, half of our class displayed fierce courage when we did the traditional first class takeover of downtown New London, wearing navy blue bathrobes. Hey, we were showing our Coast Guard pride and sure, we received some strange looks and maybe we looked a little bit absurd, but we wanted to do something that no other cadets had done before. Our class unity emboldened us and relying on one another, we turned this event into one of the most memorable nights of our lives. During fourth class year, we coined our motto, the storm yields courage, which is emblazoned on our class crest and inscribed on our class rings. And four years later, I cannot think of a more suitable motto for our class of 2017. Everyone has experienced their own trials and tribulations, but the fact that we are all here today proves that we have had the courage to weather these storms. This was no easy task. Rigorous lectures, late night lab reports, morning drill, capstone projects, papers, sail stations, inspections on fifth deck, and so much more. And these were not tasks that we completed by ourselves. We had an advisor and mentor and Lieutenant Commander Brooke Millard. She is genuine, straightforward, and most importantly, passionate about the Coast Guard and our class. She knew when to go to bat for us, but she also knew when to give us some tough love. As a result, Lieutenant Commander Millard helped foster unity among us, and together, we've triumphed. Now, just last week, Nick Mombello asked me, what will you miss the most about New London? And I had trouble thinking of places because I could only think of faces. When I think of New London, I think of the faces of all the incredible people whom we have had the honor to interact with over the past four years. Faculty, coaches, family, and friends. People who have supported us, motivated us, and pushed us to become who we are today. Thank you for providing endless phone calls, care packages, and cheers from the stands. From personal experience, I know how unity can give individuals courage to get through their own storms. During our second class year, I broke my elbow playing basketball, which required major reconstructive surgery. This was the second time during my cadet career that I had broken the same elbow and I thought for sure that my time at the academy was coming to an early end. I was defeated, and I was ready to give up. When I returned from the hospital, I had planned to isolate myself and just wallow in my misery. But as I opened my door, I found my classmates there, waiting for me, determined to get me back on track. Their unconditional support was overwhelming, and it gave me the courage to fight, to work with my classmates, and to push myself to improve. Without my classmates, I would not be here today giving this speech. Finding courage through unity has occurred individually as well as collectively. This year, we were informed that we would not have a traditional castle dance. Instead, our class banded together and planned arguably a better formal event. <laughs> The wedding, down, <clears throat> the wedding down at the Copley Fairmont in Boston was an elegant and beautiful night, and it was the perfect culminating event for our class. 
is a night we'll remember for years to come. Additionally, our class was the first Seagas class to retain everyone through the summer training program. And now, we graduate one of the largest groups of prepsters ever. <laughs> Even in the face of adversity, our class has demonstrated that we have the strength to overcome obstacles. Our courage has also manifested in creative ways by many of our classmates. Although we look the same in uniform, underneath there is a multitude of personalities and talents. Audrey Gainier uses her prodigious drawing and painting abilities to create masterpieces for the Cadet Art Show. John Dillard has been able to master just about every instrument known to humankind. Kyle Phillips, Andrew Doyle, and Casey Dieter Leeds started the high energy band Broken Sticks, and they filled every venue that they played in downtown New London. Austin Ross catalogs our class events with a keen photographer's eye. Serge Seneco and Will Glick write poetry and edit the literary journal Id Est. Nikki Barnes has led the Coast Guard sailing program to national prominence. And Dan Fioravani showed off his comedic chops when he stepped off the wrestling mat and onto the stage. These are just a few examples of our classmates willing to show a vulnerable side of themselves, all for the sake of self-expression. And then, against the storm of uncertainty, the class of 2017 has demonstrated the courage to be pioneers. To further inclusion and diversity, Shana Wazell led a group of cadets to develop the Diversity Peer Educators Program. Trey Maxim decided one major just wasn't enough, so he decided to go and finish as a double major. Tyler Carlsgaard has worked tirelessly to set himself up to be a chemical engineer for the Coast Guard. And several people, such as Sidney Wagner, have dedicated a lot of their time as first-generation college students. The initiative and dedication of these and many of our shipmates reassures us that the Coast Guard will be in good hands. Lastly, we have also been able to find courage through, the face, through unity in the face of tragedy. The passing of Beso and Soso our third class year was a difficult period for all of us, and recalling it now still brings sorrow to our hearts. It is never easy to lose a member of your family. But by unifying as a class to support one another, we have summoned the courage to keep them in our hearts, and through our every success and every challenge we overcome, we honor their memories. And now, 2017, we've made it. We are on the verge of receiving our diplomas and our commissions the rewards for four rigorous years at the Coast Guard Academy. And I wish to leave you all with one last reminder, that through unity and courage, we have all achieved so much already. And it's time to show the rest of the world just what we're capable of. Let us be relentless, let us be tenacious, and let us be courageous. And know that we are never alone because we have 195 brothers and sisters all ready to help whenever necessary. Go Bears, go Commencement, and forever, go Class of 2017. Thank you. Well, thanks, Commandant. Thanks very much, and I will be very, very brief. Um, Two bits of advice, and I know probably an awful lot of people have been giving you advice, but I'll tell you the ones that uh, got me through 45 and a half years uh, of leading Marines, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and coasties in combat and in peacetime. Take care of your people. Train them, mentor them, defend them. They will do anything you ask them to do. They'll show up to work on time. They will put their lives at risk on the high seas, interdicting drugs in, in tons dealing with the most dangerous men on the planet, or they would jump out of a helicopter in the middle of the night into raging seas to save someone's life. All you have to do is lead them. The second thing I wanted to uh, share with you is, as a bit of advice, tell, you, tell the truth. Tell the truth to your seniors, even though it's uncomfortable, even though they may not want to hear it. They deserve that. Tell the truth. And finally, a quick story about what you are about to do, because it's all going to get fairly serious here in a minute as you go from cadets
to commissioned officers. About 42 million Americans in our history have taken the oath that you are about to take, more or less. 42 million Americans, about a million of them have died in the defense of their country. And as the story goes, we have a very, very unique oath, the most unique oath on the planet. If we were in London right now and you were graduating from whatever school, you would be taking an oath to the sovereign, to the queen. If we were in France, you'd be taking an oath to the French people. If we were in Beijing, you'd be taking an oath to uh, the Communist Party and there's various others. But we are the only country, you are the only people that will take an oath to a concept embodied in a piece of paper called the U.S. Constitution. So understand that we are first and foremost a nation of laws. And if we use that as our guiding document, we will never ever go wrong. So where did the oath come from? As the story goes, and it's generally accurate as I understand it, as they were about to um, inaugurate our very first president, we'd never done that before, George Washington, in our first capital, New York City, they were just about to go out and do it, and someone said, don't we need an oath? Because up to that point, they'd been Englishmen and Englishwomen, and they'd always taken their oath to the sovereign. So they sat down and they wrote up the oath that you generally are about to take. They handed it to George Washington just before he became president. And the only thing he added to that uh, oath was, so help me God. So as you take the oath today, understand that you are swearing to the American people, to a piece of paper, to uphold the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and to your death, you're willing to go to fulfill that oath. So from one Marine to a whole bunch of cadets just about to be commissioned officers, I wish you well, farewell, fair winds and following seas, as we say in the Naval Services. God bless you, God bless your parents, and now go do it and lead those young Coasties into what uh, duties that they're accomplishing. So again, I'm incredibly proud to be up here. And with that, uh, my duty, my, my honor now, is to introduce our president, our commander-in-chief, Donald Trump. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2017. Great job. And General Kelly, I want to thank you for your leadership as the Coast Guard's service secretary. You've really been something very, very special to us as a country and to me and our administration. You've done, throughout your entire life, an incredible job defending your country. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. And John and all of his folks are also doing an incredible job protecting our homeland and our border. And I'm thrilled that my first address to the Service Academy is the graduation ceremony of the United States Coast Guard. Believe me, it's a great honor. I've been here before, and it's a very, very special place. Every cadet graduating today is your Commander-in-Chief. It is truly my honor to welcome you aboard. And you should take a moment to celebrate this incredible achievement. Governor Malloy, thank you for being here. Governor, thank you. We're glad you could join us, and I know how busy the governors are nowadays, and they're out there fighting. It's never easy. Budgets are a little tight, but we're doing a job. All of us are doing a job working together. I want to also thank Admiral Zukov and his leadership. His leadership has been amazing. Today's graduates will be fortunate to serve under such capable and experienced Commandant, he really is fantastic. Thanks also to Admiral Rendon, the Academy Superintendent. Admiral, I understand you come from a true Coast Guard family. 
Two brothers, a nephew, a cousin have all passed through these halls. That's very impressive. I guess you like the place, right? <laughs> Somebody in your family has been doing something right, I can tell you that. I'm sure that they all are very proud, just as we are very proud of the fine young officers who are graduating today, Admiral, on your watch. I would also like to take this opportunity to express our appreciation to all of the parents and the grandparents and family members who have supported these amazing graduates. Give your parents and everyone a hand. Come on. Because America has families like yours, and we'll keep all of those families safe and very, very secure. You're keeping your family safe now. If you are not already, you're about to become military families. So starting today, I hope you feel the full gratitude of our nation. These fine young cadets are about to take their rightful place on the front line of defense for the United States of America. Cadets, you deserve not only the congratulations, but the gratitude of each and every American, and we all salute you. A proud nation. And you're a part of a very, very proud nation, which salutes the 195 cadets of the Coast Guard Academy class of 2017. Good job. And I understand from the admirals that this has been a very special class. You've been trained here to handle the toughest of situations, the hardest of moments, really, that you can experience, and the hardest in people's lives, and to help the weak in their hour of need. But even for the Coast Guard, this class has been exceptionally dedicated to public service. You served breakfast at the local food bank every single weekday. You rebuilt a home with Habitat for Humanity. Last year, you led cadets in donating a total of 24,000 hours, a lot of time, to community service. You've done amazing work, and in the true Coast Guard fashion, you had fewer people and fewer resources, but you accomplished the objectives, and you did it with skill and with pride, and I'd like to say, under budget and ahead of schedule. We're doing a lot of that now in the United States government. We're doing a lot of that. I won't talk about how much I saved you on the F-35 fighter jet. I won't even talk about it. Or how much we're about to save you on the Gerald Ford, the aircraft carrier. That had a little bit of an overrun problem before I got here, you know that. Still gonna have an overrun problem. We came in when it was finished. But we're going to save some good money. And when we build the new aircraft carriers, they're going to be built under budget and ahead of schedule. Just remember that. That'll allow us to build more. Now, of course, there are always a few slip-ups from time to time. You know that. For example, I understand that once or twice, first-class cadet Bruce Kim. Where's Bruce? Where's Bruce? Ah, uh, Bruce, how do you do this to yourself, Bruce? As regimental parking officer, might have accidentally caused a few tickets to be issued or a few of your cars to be booted. Bruce, what's going on with you? But cadets, from this day forward, we want everyone to have a clean slate in life. That includes Bruce, right? And so, for any oversights or small violations that might have occurred this year, as tradition demands, I hereby absolve every cadet serving restrictions for minor offensive. Now, Bruce, stand up once again, Bruce. <laughs> they saved you, Bruce, because they all wanted me to do that, okay? Thank you, Bruce. Congratulations, Bruce. Now you're everyone's the same. Good job. By the way, Bruce, don't worry about it. That's a tradition. I was forced to do that. You know that. 
They'll work. This is truly an amazing group of cadets that are here today for commission. You could have gone to school anywhere you wanted and with very, very few responsibilities by comparison. Instead, you chose the path of service. You chose hard work, high standards, and a very noble mission to save lives, defend the homeland, and protect America's interests around the world. You chose the Coast Guard. Good choice. Good choice. You've learned skills they don't teach at other schools, right here on the grounds of this academy, and also on your larger campus, the Open Sea. That is a large, large campus, isn't it? A beautiful campus. But the greatest lesson you've learned at this proud institution is the knowledge you've learned about yourself. It's the knowledge that each and every one of you is something very special. You are leaders. For the first stormy days of your swap summer to your final weeks as a first-class cadet, you have been expected to take responsibility, to make decisions, and to act. And I, like all leaders, that's exactly what you have to do. You have to act. And you have to act properly. And you have to learn how to act under great, great pressure. You're all going to be under great pressure. You have to learn how to respond and to act under great pressure. Just days from now, you will put this vital skill into the service of your ships, your sectors, and your country. You'll serve as deck watch officers on our amazing Coast Guard cutters. You'll bring law and order to the dangerous waters as boating officers. You will block illegal shipments of cash, weapons, and drugs. You will battle the scourge of human trafficking, something that people haven't been talking about, one of the big, big plagues of the world, not our country, only the world, human trafficking. Americans will place their trust in your leadership just as they have trusted in generations of Coast Guard men and women with respect for your skill, with awe at your courage, and with the knowledge that you will always be ready. You are always ready. Not only will our citizens trust in your leadership, your commanders will trust you as well. The Coast Guard is the gold standard in delegated decision-making down to chain command. So just as your instructors have at the academy, your Coast Guard commanders will explain their vision, and then they will trust you to get the job done. Just like I, as your president, will also trust you to get the job done. It's amazing to think of the adventures that are about to begin for you. Across the country this month, millions of other students are graduating, high school, college. Many others are wondering, just what am I going to do? They're saying to themselves, what are they going to do? You know what you're going to do. Many, many students are graduating from college right now. They're saying, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go to work? You know it. You picked a good one, by the way. You picked a beautiful one, a good one, and we're really proud to have you, I can tell you. Years from now, some of them may look back and ask themselves whether they've made the right choice, whether they've made the most of the opportunities they've been given. In the Coast Guard, you will face many challenges and many threats. But one thing you will never have to face is that question of, what will I do? When you look back, you won't doubt. You know exactly how you spent your time saving lives. I look at your admirals. I look at General Kelly. I look at some of the great people in service. And I want to tell you, they're 
excited about life. They love what they do. They love the country. They love protecting our country. And they love what they do. Is that right? Good. I didn't think anyone was going to say no. What would have, that would have ruined our speech, right? They're great people. You always know just what you'll be, the leaders and officers of the United States Coast Guard. And when they see your uniform, everyone in the world will know exactly what that means. What standard, and really, if you think of it, when you talk about the great sailors and the great sailors of the world, we have them. But what stranded sailor doesn't feel relief when those red racing stripes break the horizon? What drifting soul at sea with only a short time left to live doesn't rejoice at the sound of those chopper blades overhead coming back and coming down to rescue them from death? What poison, peddling, drug runner, the scourge of our country doesn't tremble with fear when the might of the Coast Guard comes bearing down on them. In each case, we know the reason. America's life-saving service is on the way. The Coast Guard is truly vital to the United States Armed Forces and truly vital to our great country. Out of the five branches of our armed services, it's only the Coast Guard that has the power to break through 21 feet of rock solid Arctic ice, right? You're the only ones. And I'm proud to say that under my administration, as you just heard, we will be building the first new heavy icebreakers the United States has seen in over 40 years. We're going to build many of them. We need them. We need them. The Coast Guard stands watch at our ports, patrols our waterways, and protects our infrastructure. You defend America in a world of massive and very grave threats. Soon, some of you will be leading boardings of suspicious vessels searching for the most deadly weapons and detaining criminals to keep our people safe. Others of you will work with partners in scores of countries around the globe, bringing in the full power of the United States Coast Guard right up to those distant shores. And some of those shores are very far away. To secure our borders from drug cartels, human smugglers, and terror threats, Coast Guard cutters patrol more than 1,500 miles below our southern border. A lot of people didn't know that. When enormous pride hits your heart, you realize that it's with this great skill and tremendous speed our Coast Guard men and women interdict dangerous criminals and billions and billions of dollars worth of illegal narcotics every single year. Your helicopters launch from the decks of world-class national security cutters, and they chase drug smugglers at speeds far in excess of 50 knots. In rough seas at high speeds, our incredible Coast Guard snipers take their aim at the smugglers' engines. And time after time, they take out the motors on the first shot. They don't like wasting the bullets, right? <laughs> they actually don't. Your slice through roaring storms and through pouring rain and crashing waves is a place where few other people will ever venture. Exciting, exciting. But you have to have it in your heart. You have to love it, and you love it. In the Coast Guard, you don't run from danger, you chase it. And you are deployed in support of operations in theaters of conflict all around the world 
But not only do you defend American security, you also protect American prosperity. It's a mission that goes back to the earliest days of the Revenue Cutter Service. You've read about that and studied that. Today, the Coast Guard helps keep our waters open for Americans to do business. It keeps our rivers flowing with commerce, and it keeps our ports churning with American exports. You help billions and billions of dollars in goods to navigate our country every day. You are the only federal presence on our inland waterways. You police the arteries we need to rebuild this country and to bring prosperity back to our heartland. And we are becoming very, very prosperous again. You can see that. Think of the glorious mission that awaits. You will secure our harbors, our waterways, and our borders. You will partner with our allies to advance our security interests at home and abroad. And you will pursue the terrorists, you will stop the drug smugglers, and you will seek to keep out all who would do harm to our country, all who can never, ever love our country. Together, we have the same mission. And your devotion and dedication makes me truly proud to be your Commander-in-Chief. Thank you. Now I want to take this opportunity to give you some advice. Over the course of your life, you will find that things are not always fair. You will find that things happen to you that you do not deserve and that are not always warranted. But you have to put your head down and fight, fight, fight. Never, ever, ever give up. Things will work out just fine. Look at the way I've been treated lately. <laughs> Especially by the media. No politician in history, and I say this with great surety, has been treated worse or more unfairly. You can't let them get you down. You can't let the critics and the naysayers get in the way of your dreams. I guess that's why I won. Thank you. I guess that's why we won. Adversity makes you stronger. Don't give in. Don't back down. And never stop doing what you know is right. Nothing worth doing ever, ever, ever came easy. And the more righteous your fight, the more opposition that you will face. I've accomplished a tremendous amount in a very short time as president. Jobs are pouring back into our country. A brand new Supreme Court justice who's going to be fantastic for 45 years. A historic investment in our military. Border crossings, thank you to our general, are down more than 70% in just a short period of time. A total record, by the way, by a lot. We've saved the Second Amendment, expanded service for our veterans. We are going to take care of our veterans like they've never been taken care of before. I've loosened up the strangling environmental chains wrapped around our country and our economy, chains so tight that you couldn't do anything, that jobs were going down, we were losing business, we're loosening it up. We've begun plans and preparations for the border wall, which is going along very, very well. We're working on major tax cuts for all, we are going to give you the largest tax cut in the history of our country if we get it the way we want it. And we're going to give you major tax reform. 
And we're also getting closer and closer day by day to great health care for our citizens. And we are setting the stage right now for many, many more things to come. And the people understand what I'm doing, and that's the most important thing. I didn't get elected to serve the Washington media or special interests. I got elected to serve the forgotten men and women of our country, and that's what I'm doing. I will never stop fighting for you, and I will never stop fighting for the American people. As you leave this academy to embark on your exciting new voyage, I am heading on a very crucial journey as well. In a few days, I will make my first trip abroad as president. With the safety, security, and interests of the American people as my priority, I will strengthen all friendships and will seek new partners, but partners who also help us, not partners who take and take and take. Partners who help and partners who help pay for whatever we are doing and all of the good we're doing for them, which is something that a lot of people have not gotten used to and they just can't get used to it. I say, get used to it, folks. I'll ask them to unite for a future of peace and opposition for our peoples and the peoples of the world. First in Saudi Arabia, where I'll speak with Muslim leaders and challenge them to fight hatred and extremism and embrace a peaceful future for their faith. And they're looking very much forward to hearing what we, as your representative, we have to say. We have to stop radical Islamic terrorism. Then in Israel, I'll reaffirm our unbreakable alliance with the Jewish state. In Rome, I will talk with Pope Francis about the contributions of Christian teachings to the world. Finally, I'll attend the NATO summit in Brussels and the G7 in Sicily to promote security, prosperity, and peace all over the world. I'll meet scores of leaders and honor the holiest sites of these three great religions. And everywhere I go, I will carry the inspiration I take from you each day, from your courage and determination to do whatever is required. Save and protect American lives. Save and protect American lives. We want security. You're going to give us security. In just one example, we see how priceless that gift of life is to the people you touch every day. A few years ago, a Coast Guard helicopter and rescue swimmer took off in the direction of three terrified fishermen who clung to their sinking and burning vessel. That day, our Coast Guard heroes did their jobs well. They flew over the sea, despite tremendous danger, and extended a helping hand at the moment it was most urgently needed. There was very little time left. But that's not the re most remarkable part of that story. As one Coast Guard swimmer put it, you do that stuff all the time. You do it every hour of the day. Something is happening all the time with the United States Coast Guard. You do an amazing job. A remarkable thing happened with that rescue. But when you think of it, you do those rescues all the time. There, the Vietnamese fishing captain grabbed the swimmer's hand. He looked at his Coast Guard rescuer in the eye and said, I was asking God to please let me live. I need to see my kids. Please, God, please let me live so that I can see my kids. Then God sent me you. That's what he said.
to every new officer and to every new Coast Guard member here today or out protecting life around the world on some of the roughest waters anywhere, you truly are doing God's work. What a grateful heart you must all have because it is with my very grateful heart and America's cheers for the Coast Guard and America cheers for you often that we wish you good luck. As your commander in chief, I thank you, I salute you, and I once again congratulate the Coast Guard class of 2017. God bless you, God bless the Coast Guard, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Great honor. Good luck. Enjoy your life. <laughs>